I'm happy that we're here today to talk about um, something I'm just really interested in. I've learned a lot about from you and um, about IBSC and constipation in general. I think it's nice that we are, you know, uh, revisiting this area. Uh, it's a very important area, as you know, and there have been some some changes since the last time we we met and and we discussed this area. So hopefully we can talk about some new things uh, and and help our help our listeners and audience about this. That sounds great. Um, well, I was hoping you could talk a little bit about the latest approved treatments that we have for um, constipation predominant IBS. So I think, you know, the new kid on the block is a new mechanism of treatment, and that is using a sodium hydrogen pump exchange mechanism. So the other mechanisms, as you know, we've had for many years is the chloride channel mechanism using lubiprostone, for example. And then we had the um, uh, guanylate cyclase agonist mechanism, for example, linaclotide and placanitide. And these drugs we've now had for at least five, six, seven years. And, and we've had good success with these drugs, you know, in the management of our patients. I would, I would say 50%, 40 to 50% of patients respond. Still, there is a large unmet need. And this new uh, interesting compound, um, it is uh, claimed that it has a triple action. Uh, it, it retains sodium within the lumen of the small bowel, and thereby it facilitates laxation but also it has effects in, on visceral hypersensitivity and also on permeability. So it has a triple action, but, but the main, it is not a, a traditional secretagogue, but it is much more a sodium hydrogen exchange blocker. And that's how it works. And the clinical trials so far have been very robust. Uh, the drug only got approved, uh, approved some time back, but only launched earlier this year in April. And I've had a chance to really try it on a few patients with, with, with definite success. Great. So do you, uh, where would you see this um, um, in kind of like the algorithm for your patients, do you think? That's right. So you, you know that I tend to see the most challenging people. Yeah. So I think for me, uh, anyone who has not responded to any of the currently available treatments, I think clearly this would be my choice. Okay. Uh, the other um, interesting facet about this compound is the low incidence of diarrhea. I mean, diarrhea is clearly there, but it has a low incidence of diarrhea. So not only patients who did not respond uh, previously to the currently available treatments, but patients who have unfortunately experienced adverse effects to current available treatments. We know, for example, in aclutide, you know, about 20%, 15, 20% of patients get diarrhea. So mm -hmm. Those are, again, potential patients who may benefit with this treatment. So those are the kind of patients we are looking for. And maybe we can even start some patients early on. I mean, we don't need to see that they haven't responded. Or they, but if it's effective, it's a twice-a-day dosage regime, uh, usually given uh, you know, before food kind of stuff. And I think it, it, would be, it would fit into that group. So I think we are in a tertiary quaternary practice area. So I would see that uh, very soon there'll be a chunk of my patients uh, taking this formulation. Yes, I would assume there would be, definitely for your patients. We, um, I do have many patients with the traditional secretagogues that do have diarrhea, and so that might be an interesting option. For them. I agree. I think that would be clearly my, my first uh, place where we are, we are really, that's in fact the first three, four patients we gave really had that as their main, main problem. I think. Oh, interesting. Okay. Would you ever see, or do you have experience um, with patients on more than one uh, class of drug in a combination? Do you think you might see that at all? Yeah, so I, I have not combined um, many of these classes of agents generally for multiple reasons. Usually the side effect profile does go up and the costs also do seem to go up um, exponentially. And many uh, insurance companies also seem to put an embargo on these. What I've tried to do, for example, if, if, if we are getting um, the constipation symptom benefit with, with either linaclotide or with, uh, uh, with uh, tenapenor, but their pain is not getting better, then maybe I will try and go for some kind of neuromodulator kind of an agent or low dose antidepressant to try and get that other component 
also fixed. So that is the approach I've taken rather than giving two or more of the same um, approved drugs for IBSC.